Hello my friends, I'm Clover, this is Gas, and today we are solving A Consecutive Unwound by Philip Newman. This is a consecutive pair of Sudoku, it was posted originally on December 10th, 2024. And for consecutive pair of Sudoku, we have normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and each outline three by three region. And on top of that, we have some white circles in the grid. And digits that are separated by a white circle have to have a difference of exactly one, like for instance, four and five, or seven and eight, that kind of thing. Not all possible circles have been given. That means there might be other digits elsewhere in the grid that could have a difference of one that haven't been marked. And we have this very neat spiral pattern kind of propagating through the grid. And we are going to start right here because there's a six in the column already and we need a chain of five digits that are all consecutive with each other. And those can't be big digits because the best we could do would be seven, eight, nine, which is definitely nowhere close to being five digits. So it's gonna have to be one, two, three, four, five. Now we don't know exactly what order that goes in, except that if this was one, we would have to do one, two, three in this row, which is not possible because there's a three right there already. So that's my five. And we're gonna go in that direction, making these three cells seven, eight, and nine. Now five could go either five, six, seven, or five, four, three. Again, there's a three in the row, so this must be five, six, seven. Now seven can go either seven, eight, nine, or seven, six, five. Seven, eight, nine is broken because then what would we put on the other side of the nine? We would need two eights in the same region, which is not acceptable in Sudoku. So this has to be seven, six, five, and then what goes next to four, five, that is a four. This one starts a chain of digits that goes one, two, three, four, five. And then the five, because there's a four there already, can't count downwards. We can't go five, four, three, two, one. That would break that. So we need to go five, six, seven, eight, nine, making this digit an eight. So that takes care of most of the consecutive pairs. Let's take a look at the ones that are just in the regions around the edges. So this can't have a two, a three, a four, a six, or a nine. And that actually limits us to just one possible pair, seven and eight. So that is taken care of now. These have to be one, five, and six. And those all resolve based on the digits that are already in the columns. This can't include a one, a six, a seven, an eight, or a four. So it must be two and three, which go in that order. And this resolves again, based on the digits in the columns. That needs to be a nine to finish off the column. Those will be one, two, and seven, which doesn't quite resolve yet. And these are going to be three and eight, which do go ahead and resolve. Now, in row three, that's a four, that's a one and a two to finish the row. And in row seven, we need to place a six somewhere. It can't be in region nine, so it must go there. And now this is going to be an eight and a nine. Because that's an eight, nine pair, we now know that that's a seven, which resolves the rest of the column. In column three, we need a one, two, and three. The one, two pair tells us that this is gonna be the three. And then there's a one in the row here. So that's going to be a two and a one. Now here we need three, four, and nine to finish the region. The nine can't go in these two cells because there's a nine in the row already. So that will be a three, four pair. And this is now a two, five pair, which resolves. And here we need three and four to finish the region, which are resolved by the three and four up here. Now we need a one in this region. It can't go in those two cells because they see a one. So one goes right there. And then that's gonna be a six, seven pair. To finish the row, we need five and eight. Here we need six and seven to finish the row. And I think that's all we can do without resorting to these last two consecutive pairs. So let's have a look at those. So here we can't use two, three, or four. So it's gotta be a big pair, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, or eight, nine. It can't be eight, nine because we have an eight, nine right there. So it's some combination of five, six, seven, and eight. Now I can eliminate some of those digits because there's a six and an eight in the row. So this is definitely odd. Interestingly, this is definitely even. And we're gonna leave that for a moment and look over here. So this pair of digits has to be from one, two, three, four, five, because we have a six, seven, eight, and nine in the column already. Now this can't be three, four, or five because it sees those. So this is now a one, two pair. We can eliminate one and two, making these three, four, five. There's a three and four in this row, so that's a five, which makes that a seven, which is going to resolve a whole lot of good stuff for us. This is no longer a seven, so that's a seven, and this can no longer be a five. 
Now, a digit from one or two that's adjacent to or consecutive to a digit from three or four, that has to be two and three. And these are going to be one, four, and nine, which that has to be our nine. There's our one, there's our four. And we just need to finish off this last region to finish the puzzle. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's A Consecutive Unwound Consecutive Paris Gas. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. And I will see you again in three days.